Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the good doctor, the doctor of Detroit, Snowman, Mother Truck, and Jones the Third. That's right, when you got an emergency, when you got a wrestling emergency, you call the doctor, Dr. Snowman Jones. Today we're continuing our series, uh, reviewing individual wrestlers from the WWE. Starting off with Jerry Lawler, we left off with Jack Swagger. Now Jerry Lawler, he's an interesting individual. Uh, Snowman Jones, the only personal story I have about Jerry Lawler is actually when the cat, uh, Stacy Carter, was over my house. It was interesting to me. She had bought me lunch. She's a nice lady. I was helping her with her website at the time. And um, I was stuffing some trash into our trash can. And it was funny to me because Stacy Carter goes, Snowman Jones, you remind me of Jerry Lawler, my ex-husband. He used to always try to stuff more and more into the trash can instead of getting out a new bag and blah, 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 blah. And for whatever reason, it was a little bit of a mark out moment for me. But that's the first time I had ever been compared to Jerry Lawler. And um, it stuck with me ever since. But Jerry Lawler, interesting individual. I think he's definitely popping into the row game lately because he's getting more and more hair on his head. He, uh, he has a lot of the... Uh, what is it called? The Ed Hardy kind of skulls and skater shirts lately. It's interesting to me that the older he gets, the younger he dresses. The guy's had a lot of plastic surgery pulling his face back. At least that's my opinion. I, I don't know it for sure, but it seems pretty obvious. But the guy's got a lot of talent. Very talented individual. He's a great part of Raw. I wish Jim Ross's health was a little bit better. That way we can enjoy Jim and Jerry together. But Jerry Lawler is definitely a mainstay in the WWE. Uh, if I was to give him a report card on his announcing and what he brings to the WWE, I would give him an A. It's great that he can wrestle, he can entertain, he can be a, a heel or a face. He's just a good person for the WWE to keep in their cast. And if the WWE ever wants to get rid of him, I'm sure there's potential for him in TNA or all around the country. And certainly the guy has experience where he could start his own wrestling promotion. Much like uh, Jerry and Jeff Jarrett did. That brings us to Jimmy and Jay Uso, the Uso brothers. Those guys are interesting. They got a lot of talent. Um, I believe they wrestled in the Gulf Coast area. I saw them a little bit at FCW. They didn't stick around long at FCW, uh, what's now known as NXT. They've got the skill. They've got the talent. They're a little small for what they are. Usually those big Samoan-ish type of guys they got to be 300 pounds, and I think that's one thing about these two is they're in good shape, but they just don't fit the bill in my book. They're not big enough, strong enough, intimidating enough wrestlers. They don't, they don't fall into the same ranks as a Haku or a Jamal and Rosie, a Rikishi. You know, they're just not the same superhero in training that some of their relatives have been. Then there's Jinder Mahal. Jinder, I learned a little bit about in his FCW days. Jinder has a lot of potential. He's a good size, he's athletic, he's quick, he's strong. I don't know if he's got the gimmick yet. He's just very young. Give him five or six years and this guy will have the gimmick down. But for now, he's still up and coming. He could have some potential down the road is, is my two cents on Jinder Mahal. You know, he is 6'5". Uh, the WWE has a big presence in India. There's a lot of fans, so having an Indian wrestler plays to the WWE audience worldwide. So there's potential for him to be with the company for a while. I just don't know that his gimmick is all there for the American uh, audience. Brings us to John Cena. If you haven't checked it out yet, go back to a previous episode of Wrestling 911 Radio on our YouTube station, YouTube slash 911 Wrestling, and we gave an entire biography on John Cena. Hasn't gotten a lot of views or listens yet, but I'm sure it will. Just give it a little bit of time. Give us your two cents on our John Cena biography. You can hear all the details there. Overall, John Cena in this era is this era's Hulk Hogan. He's the fan, fan favorite. He's kid friendly. He sells a lot of toys, a lot of merch, a lot of shirts, a lot of t-shirts in general, a lot of hats, whatever. The guy has got the marketing going on. He's got a big push from WWE. Expect him with the company for another 10 years if he stays healthy. Josh Matthews is, is next. Josh Matthews is an interesting individual to me because he started off with the Tough Enough Contest Season 1. I believe he was matched up with Maven. 
He came in second or third in that season, and frankly, I was pulling for him. He's pulling off some cool moon saws. He's got a lot of talent in the ring, but he's 130 pounds soaking wet. I would love to see them, see the WWE, let this guy get a run every once in a while as a superstar. You know, have him be the announcer that gets his ass kicked and then gets in the ring and maybe steals a roll-up victory against a bigger guy. I like Josh Matthews. I think he's a real professional. I saw him training in Tampa, Florida as an announcer. And frankly, the first time, the first three or four times he announced, he was very nervous. He was learning people's names. He was studying scripts. But the thing that I noticed about Josh Matthews is that he would sit there for an hour before the show and he'd just go over names, go over history, and he, he knew that this was make it or break it for him to make, is, to make him the WWE as, was as an announcer. And to give him credit, he put a lot of hours into it, he got over his nerves, and he did a good job. Then there's JTG. JTG has been jobbed out a little bit lately. Um, in his prime with Crime Time, or his highlights with Prime Time, they were a pretty decent tag team. I thought they were going to do well, but they turned more into a comedic tag team. Um, JTG's got talent. I liked his old kind of steel stuff gimmick that he had. Uh, thug, if you will. Nice enough guy. I uh, I hope we see more of him and he's not just a jobber for guys like um, Brodus Clay, etc. Then, of course, there's Justin Gabriel, uh, formerly known as DJ Gabriel and, and DJ Angel, I think, back when I first met him. Uh, Justin Gabriel, uh, you know, the behind-the-scenes story is, is obviously that he is not a straight individual, which is fine and all, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's from, was it Cape Town, South Africa, or, I'll have to think about it a little bit, but, you know, the guy's got a lot of skill in the ring, yeah, he's Cape Town, South Africa, signature move, the 450 Splash, uh, former WWE Tag Team Champion, they have him listed at 6'1", 213, the guy's not an inch over 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 he's a tiny, tiny guy, he's in good shape, I don't know, he just doesn't have much of a gimmick yet, I don't know what his gimmick is, um... I hope he does well, but frankly, he's the kind of guy who would greatly benefit from if there was an old ECW, the original ECW, that Al Snow went to, the original ECW that Tommy Dreamer, Sandman, Raven, all went to to develop their gimmicks. Remember, Sandman was a surfer before he was an ECW. Al Snow was Avatar before he was an ECW. Just incredible what it was Aldo Montoya. You know, Tommy Dreamer was a pretty boy before he went to ECW. Raven was Scotty Flamingo before he went to ECW. Justin Angel would benefit from going to a organization like ECW to develop his gimmick. Then there's Justin Roberts, JR, the new JR. Uh, frankly, this guy, he seems like he's being groomed for a Michael Cole type of position, um, but likely he's just kind of a passing announcer. I don't know that he's that he's anything special at this point. Give him four or five years, he may develop. Caitlin. Caitlin I only saw a few times when she was training before she was pulled up to, uh, to NXT. Caitlin, you know, she's got a good look, but again, she's another one of those generic female superstars. She's a decent worker, but I don't know that if you lined her up with a bunch of other sexy playboy, playmate blondes that I could identify her out of a lineup, um, other than the brown streaks in her hair, what makes her special? You know, there's nothing to her look, her gimmick, that makes her that different than 12 other women on the roster. Then there's Kane. And Kane will be my last individual in this countdown today. So we went from Jerry Lawler to Kane. The first time I saw Kane, I believe it was in USWA or Smoky Mountain Wrestling at the time. Might have been USWA. Uh, he and Al Snow were feuding with the Rock and Roll Express. Kane was performing as Unibom, uh, the six foot nine inch, three hundred pound, Sid Vicious look-alike, if you will. And I remember that was the thing that stuck out in my mind because he had the short blonde hair at the time. It was his pre-Isaac Yankum gimmick. Al Snow hadn't developed into anything in the WWE yet. And frankly, the first time I saw them, they were they wrestled a match, dominated their opponents, 
Isaac Jacobs was just huge. Kane was just a huge guy wrestling as Unabomb. And I thought, my goodness, I can't wait for this guy to get picked up by the WWE. And Jim Ross was the announcer at the time frame, did a one-on-one -on -one interview. Uh, you can probably find it on YouTube. But it was really fascinating because I still remember that to this day, seeing Al Snow, seeing Isaac Jacobs, who became Kane, who went through Diesel and Isaac... Um, Isaac Yankum or whatever, Glenn Jacobs went, became Isaac Yankum, became Kane, and really thinking, wow, these guys, Al Snow and Kane, have a lot of potential. They had, you know, Kane doing a stupid gimmick where he was mimicking the Rock and Roll Express, put on a wig, it was just dumb, but you could see a lot of potential there. And in hindsight, I didn't realize that. Jim Ross would grow to be quite the professional that he became in the WWE. Because this was a long time ago. This was 20 years ago, if it was a day. So anyway, folks, Snowman Jones here gave you his reviews. We're over time. We're at 11 minutes. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Check out our other radio shows. Check out 911wrestling.com, and you'll see me at the matches.